praise Him. I love to praise Him and live up His holy name. Singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah. And to Jesus, my Lord, we exalt you on high. The steps of the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delight in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord uphold him with his hand, with his hands, with his hands. His hand, the Lord uphold him with his hand. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord uphold him with his hand, with his hands tonight, with his hands, with his hands. The Lord uphold him with his hand. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord uphold him with his hand. 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. King of kings tonight. Hallelujah. Refine us fire. Hallelujah. Porter, hallelujah, of our soul. Firstborn from the dead, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our final neighbor. Purify this evening. Shara ba 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 worship you. This evening we bring all our loved ones before you and remembering all of them, dear God, before you, who brothers and sisters and parents and nieces and nephews and in-laws, God, who do not know you, blinded by the God of this world. We pray, Father, that you help remove the blindness from their heart, that they may come to a place of conviction, 
come to a place of repentance in the name of Jesus and even so bringing every member of the body of Christ. Oh God, we pray for each and every one that Father in heaven that all of us will always be ready and prepared uh, and to be counted worthy to stand before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the soon coming King, the soon coming Judge. And tonight as well, we pray for one another in this place. God, as the word has been preached, Lord, we pray, let your word go forth like a lamb unto our feet and like unto our path. This evening, surrender every one of us here and those of us who need your help. God, need doors to be open, be it in finances, be it in relationship, be it in God, house, a house, a place to, to stay. Oh Lord, be it in marriage, oh Lord, we pray. God, you are the only answer, only way uh, to all the needs of our life. And we come before you, Lord, bringing every of our need unto you. And we pray that you quicken, God, the answers that each and every one of us are seeking for. Hallelujah. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Amen. So, I uh, just want to let you know, next Wednesday uh, and Friday, there will be no service here. Next Wednesday will be the 1st of June, uh, which shall be the Bible conference in the PJ Church. Uh, beginning at 8, our church will be singing in the choir on the first night, 1st of June. And then Friday, there shall be no prayer meeting here. Uh, we'll be there in PJ until Saturday morning. Okay, So we'll be back to church here on Sunday morning. 9.30 for prayer, 10.30 service, and also the night 6 o'clock prayer, 7 o'clock service. All right. So let's bow our heads. We want to go before God with our giving. Father, bless everyone in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. As we come before you with our offerings, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, if you have your Bible, I'd like you to turn to the book of Luke, uh, chapter 17. Luke 17. I was 11 to 19, and... Uh, the title of tonight's sermon is, Where Are the Nine? And it happened as he went to Jerusalem, was 11 of Luke 17, that he passed through the midst of Samaria <coughs> and Galilee. And as he entered a certain village, uh, they met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. He lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself to the priests. So it was that as they went, uh, they were cleansed or healed. One of them was 15. When he saw that he was healed, <coughs> returned and with a loud voice, Glorify God. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was not a Jew, he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were they not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Verse 19, he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. 
Again, the title of tonight's sermon is Where Are the Nine? In which this question was asked by Jesus and is found in the chapter, the verses that we have uh, just read, the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. Verse 17, So Jesus answered and said, Were they not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? In verse 17 and verse 18, Jesus asked three questions. That is, were there not ten cleansed? And were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And then uh, the one we are looking at is the second question he asks, where are the nine? But anyway, to begin with, this, this story here is a powerful story about the abundance grace of Christ. In that he healed all ten lepers at one go. He cleansed them all. All ten of them cry out to Jesus, have mercy on us, and all of them will heal and uh, it's a powerful story about the abundance, uh, mercy, and grace of Jesus Christ. This story is to tell us that the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ is rich, okay? is plenteous, is generous, is abundance. Ten lepers who were outcasts, they stood afar off, okay? who were despised, by society, everywhere they go, they have to shout if there's people in front of them, unclean, unclean. And upon hearing that Jesus uh, was in their town, in where they are, there's no Jesus, he went about. And uh, we find here in the word of God that he went from uh, Jerusalem and then he went uh, and he passed by Samaria and Galilee, and then he entered a certain village. And um, Jesus, according to Acts chapter 10, and Acts also was written by, the, by uh, Dr. Liu, say the same thing about Jesus. He went about doing good, uh, healing those who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus is always going about, he goes to where the need is, and, uh, uh, and in going, he begins to, um, uh, begins to cause miracles to happen. And this is so to tell us that, you know, if we are to uh, go about, if we go to where the needs are, okay, God can do um, something for the people that are there. But anyway, these group of people, uh, they begin to cry out. Uh, to him upon uh, finding out that he's there for mercy. And Jesus shows mercy by cleansing them completely from this horrible, incurable disease. Okay? As they acted upon what Jesus told them to do. Now, at the first hearing to what Jesus has to say to them, that is... Go and show uh, yourself to the priest. Okay? In verse number 14, go show yourself to the priest. We might think that Jesus is trying to make things difficult uh, for them. Okay? And, uh, or Jesus is not being very merciful. You know, they are lepers and probably some of them have uh, some of them maybe in their fifth stage of leprosy uh, the fifth stage of leprosy is when uh, that leper cannot feel any more pain he could have a, a scar on his hand and a deep scar and um, but he will not feel any pain at all Okay. He may have a, a finger that is diseased and have rotten, and he will not feel any pain at all. 
Okay? So here are 10 of them. And some may, some, some may have a facial disfigurement. Probably their nose are all torn. Some may have their fingers, you know, rot. Some, their legs may be all, you know, full of wounds and scar. And uh, 10 of them together, they, they are a horrible sight to see. And um, they would not smell good at all, you know, a rotten flesh, okay? When flesh begins to rot, uh, there's a kind of smell that begins to uh, comes out from that, that rottenness. So 10 together, and they're crying out to Jesus, have mercy on us. And next thing Jesus says to them, now Jesus can do anything. Jesus heal, okay, right on the spot. Okay, on the spot, he'll be cleansed totally, all of them. And here are 10 um, very sad-looking lepros. And yet Jesus' uh, answer to them was, go and show uh, yourself to the priests. And, and we may think that Jesus is trying to make things difficult. Jesus is not very merci merciful, not very merciful, but that is not true. But rather what he was doing when he asked them to go and show themselves to the priests uh, was because of what the law of Moses requires for a person who is healed from leprosy. The law of Moses in the book of Leviticus chapter 14 requires if a man is healed of leper, leprosy, this disease, what he has to do is that he has to go to see the priests. And the priests, upon looking upon him, checking him, will certify okay, that, yes, you are truly uh, healed of your leprosy. And now you can re-enter back into society. Okay? You can go back. Once you are not welcome, but now you can go back into society, you can get a job, you can uh, work, you can get married, you, you can go back to your family. So what Jesus was trying to do is that Jesus is trying to get them uh, to go uh, to the priests according to the law of Moses, found in the book Levitic, Leviticus chapter 14, to certify uh, that uh, from the priests that these leprous, leprous are cured, okay? And right now, uh, heal, okay? So, at the present moment, what happened is that all of them are standing afar off, okay? So, all of them are not healed, but Jesus asked them to go uh, to the priests, uh, to certify them as healed. If Jesus haven't, had not sent the lepers to the priests, no one would have believed the miracle had really taken place. Anyway, as they went, the Bible says they were cleansed. They were healed as they went. Okay? So not before. Before that, they were still in the leper stage. They were still having all this disease. But as they began to obey Jesus, by faith, going as if they were healed, as they go, okay, we find that they got healed. As they went, the scripture says, they were cleansed in verse number 14. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Okay? Which means that when they left to go to the priests, they still had leprosy. Okay? It means that they did not have anything to show yet to the priests. What the priest wants to see. Okay? But as they went, okay, as they acted upon the words of Jesus by faith, 
in their act of going, they were healed. They did not wait to be healed to go because to go to the priest means to get the priest certification. You are healed. Okay? But they did not. Uh, uh, they did not uh, feel healed yet, but they acted upon Jesus' words and they begin to like what you call that. They act if as if they are already healed, because to go to the priest you must be already healed to go. So, but they were not healed yet. But when Jesus says, "Go to the priest," they acted according to what Jesus. I told them to do, and they acted as they were healed. And they began to act by faith, and they begin to go as Jesus told them to go. Okay, it probably happened maybe at the third step as they begin to all together take step one, step two, and step three, and then step four, they, all of them begin to notice something about each other. Hey, this guy, something is different. And he began to look at him. Hey, you look, something happened to you. And then see that, you know, the wounds begin to heal. Hey, your, 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 your nose is all, all back to normal. And this, the other guy says, hey, your hand and, and your leg and your scar. And, and they begin to look at each other. They begin to realize that, you know what, there's a change. They, they are all cleansed. So here's an important lesson of healing. We can all learn from these lepers. Act as if you are already healed. Okay. So many times preachers pray for people who may uh, have uh, certain problems and the preacher will tell the people that they pray for, you know, stand up, do something that you cannot do. Okay. Uh, uh, just you know, just act on it. Act as if you're already you know healed. Do something that you cannot do. Trusting God requires us to do something, as if we already have it. Okay, it means you know it. It can mean uh, this morning, like um, like maybe chopping wood to build an ark. If you are, if your name is a Noah. And God is saying to you, rain is going to come. Okay? And you've never seen rain before, but God tells you, you need to build an ark, rain is going to come. But you don't just sit down and just pray. I know prayer is important, but then you do something about it. You go about, you chop wood. You begin to do something about it. It's like maybe Goliath or David and Goliath. You're facing a Goliath. Okay. And uh, yes, you can. Yes, God can send a lightning and, and struck Goliath down if you're praying for that to happen. But God wants you to also pick up some small stones, a few small stones, and take along your sling, uh, a sling bag and, and swing it at Goliath. Okay. Faith involves that you begin to do something. Act as you have already healed. These ten lepers, they act as if they are already healed. Because to go to the priest is to go there to have him certify. And say, okay, you are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You can go back to society. But at that point, they are not healed yet. But Jesus says, go. So they turn and they go by faith. It means they act as though they are already healed. They, they begin to do something, you know, in that direction act as, as they already have been healed. And, there's, and as they act upon it, what happened is that one by one, all of them to begin to uh, find out, discover that um, they are completely healed. So when Jesus told them to go to the priest, uh, they did not say, you know, we are not healed yet to go. We are not, you know, cleansed yet to go, Jesus. 
you know, we are still having this problem. They did not say all that. But they just believe that they are healed. And then and as they acted on their belief in Jesus, uh, the miracle began to come upon them. Okay, now, all of us know this story in and out. You heard this many times. Luke 17 about this ten lepers. Okay. And um, it did not just end with the ten cleanse or heal. But the Bible tells us, added to it, there is also another, in a way, a miracle. When one of them who is a Samaritan, when he saw that he was healed, okay, uh, who did not know much about God, because he's a Samaritan, compared to the other nine who are Jews, who know God, okay, but one main thing this Samaritan knew to do that the rest of the nine knew not to do and that, and that is this Samaritan man knew to be grateful. And this is a powerful thing. Okay? Because we see what happened to this man, this one man who did not know much about religion, who did not know much about God, who did not know much you know, about the laws and, and all that is involved. But one thing he knew, he knew how to turn back. He knew how to be grateful. He knew how to stop and look at himself and make a turn and go back to Jesus, fell on Jesus' feet, begin to worship Jesus, begin to give thanks to Jesus. And, and this truth that he knew was a powerful truth. Verse 15 and verse 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorify God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And we read in verse 19, Jesus says to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. One of them, not all of them, returned to Jesus. But yet all of them seems to look alike. Ten lepers. Ten of them stood afar off. Ten of them cry out with the same words, Have mercy on us, Jesus. Okay. All of them, ten of them, obey Jesus when Jesus says, Go to the priests. All of them. And all of them were cleansed. All of them looks all alike. But only one really stood out. Only one really stand out among the rest. And the area that he stood out was he began to make a U-turn and he went back to Jesus to give glory to Jesus. Okay. Whereas the rest of the nine, nowhere else to be seen. The one who returned, he got two miracles instead of one. The rest of the nine got one miracle instead of two. Okay. And the one that returned got two miracles. And that is, that is he got healed. And not only he got healed, but he got forgiven. That burden of guilt okay, has been taken out from him. Gratefulness is a miracle producer. Gratefulness can get, uh, can, can, you can get miracles from Jesus just by being grateful to him. Okay? So, but sadly, Jesus, he wanted all ten to receive the double portion. Two miracles instead of one. Because gee, all of them were the same. All of them got cleansed, but only one got two. Whereas Jesus wanted all of them to get the second miracle as well. The miracle of forgiveness. But only one. And Jesus, when this man came back, 
Jesus asked the question, where are the nine? Where is my, my praise? You must understand that uh, uh, our Lord wants his praise, wants his worship. He is jealous for it. When he does something for us, he in return expects uh, us to come back to him and show our gratefulness to him. Someone says this about uh, gratefulness and ungratefulness. Gratefulness is the highest duty of the believer. The supreme virtue, the fountain from which all other blessings flow. Gratefulness is like a fountain. And it's like a fountain whereby all other blessing flows out from. Okay, this man returned and he was found grateful and he received another miracle. Ungratefulness is the leprosy of the soul. Okay, it eats away on the inside, destroys our happiness, cripples our joy, paralyzes our praise, Render us numb to all the blessing of God. These nine who were not grateful did not receive anything more from the Lord, even though the Lord wants to give them. Where are the nine? If they are there as well, Jesus would have, would have also uh, given them the second miracle. Now, since there are nine of them, and Jesus did not give a specific answer to why the nine, being a Jew, being one who knows God better, I'm going to look at nine perhaps answer why they did not return back to give glory to Jesus like this one. Okay. So I'm finding it very hard to preach tonight, reason because I add too much just now. So forgive me, okay? Shouldn't eat before preaching. When you got a heavy stomach, something about, about, about preaching, find hard to preach. But anyway, since there are nine, I'm going to look at nine perhaps reasons why they did not come back to, to glorify Jesus, to worship Jesus. The first Perhaps reason, maybe they taken some supplements and then they begin to instead of uh, and 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 they begin to give praise to the supplement instead of Jesus. Who knows? Maybe they've been taking supplements and they feel a bit better, and somehow uh, today they feel completely better. I don't know. Perhaps maybe for the second one, the first one maybe is the supplement, the vitamins. He thinks that it is this vitamin, this supplement that's causing him to be better and therefore he did not go back and say, thank you, Jesus. But he rather say, thank you, supplement. Thank you, vitamins. Perhaps maybe for the second one, uh, maybe his roots are shallow roots. He just joined the crowd just because everybody is doing it. The nine of them, you know, they are there. So he joins in. And uh, just because everybody is doing it, but his belief is Jesus is only on the surface level. He's only on the, the roots is very shallow. And by the time he reaches the high priest, uh, his level of faith has all disappeared. Okay, because his roots are shallow and he, he, he does not really believe in, in, in Christ and therefore not a need to go back to Jesus to give him the glory. For the third one, perhaps it was on purpose to avoid Jesus because uh, uh, following Jesus involves a high, very high cost. And he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to, he's not prepared to, 
to pay the cost of following Jesus. Okay? Maybe he has heard, you know, to follow Jesus, you need to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. To follow Jesus, you must put him first above all people, even your family. You have to put Jesus above them. And, and he kind of like maybe perhaps, um, you know, uh, uh, he's trying to avoid going back to Jesus uh, and, and uh, because of the cost of following is too high. For the fourth, fourth man who did not go back to glorify Jesus, maybe he still loved his sin. Okay? Uh, he still wants to sin. There's sin that he still loves. And when he saw that, he's healed you know, uh, to follow Jesus means, you know what, I cannot do this, I cannot do that, I cannot, you know, do this, you know, and uh, between Jesus and between sin, okay, uh, he chose sin, he wants to go back, now I'm, now, I'm, now I'm okay, man, now I'm good, I'm totally healed, now I can, I can go back with my buddies, you know, and, and join them and, 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 and do what I did before. For the fifth one, uh, maybe he got caught up with so many other things that he forgot about returning to Jesus, like the Samaritan. But he was so caught up. He, 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 when he saw his heel, he, he uh, went straight to the high priest, the high priest certified him healed. You know, and then he went uh, back to his family, he went back to his friends, uh, he began to throw a party, celebration, do this, do this, do that. That by the time, you know, um, he, he, he was so busy, 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 that uh, another time Jesus, he, maybe he gets good intention, but okay, another time Jesus, and by the time he's like, no more time really. He is now taking care of his buffaloes, taking care of his family, taking care of his father's business, you know, doing this, doing traveling, playing, playing, you know, playing what? Playing hockey, playing golf, playing this, playing that. He got no more time for Jesus. The sixth person. Uh, maybe he wants to just move forward and do not want anything to do with the past. Okay. And uh, he just wants to forget everything in the past. And now he wants to just move forward, brand new life. Uh, or perhaps the seventh one. Again, maybe caught up with, uh, um, with uh, his life. Or maybe the eighth one. Uh, eighth one maybe felt God owns him. And why should I go back to Jesus? You own me, God. Because, you know what, maybe he feels that he has such a hard life. You know, being a leprous, uh, you are an outcast. You, you, you suffer so much. And maybe he feels that, you know what, uh, God owns him. And why should I go back to God to honor him? You know, after all, I've lived such a hard life. And now I have this new life, you know. And you own me, God, and, and, and I, sh I, I would not go back to you. Or maybe the last one, the last one perhaps was thinking that the rest of them would do it. Let the rest of them go back and praise God. Let the rest of them glorify God. Okay? There are enough praises in all nine of them. Okay? Let the nine of them do all the praises, you know. Anyway, Jesus, everywhere he goes, he got people praising him. Glory, amazing, hallelujah, you know. So, so many praises given to him, you know. Um, just one would not make a difference, you know. His thankfulness would not be missed. Maybe he's thinking that way. And therefore... He deems it not necessary to go back like the one who went back and fell on the feet of Jesus and glorify God. But whatever the reasons given, Jesus asked a penetrating question. 
where are the nine? Okay, where is maybe John there? Where is Andrew there? Or where is this number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, eight, nine? Where are the nine? Are there not ten who got healed? What? Where are the nine? Now, we're going to close and look with what the one who is a Samaritan, uh, what um, gratefulness looks like through this Samaritan man who ended up with two miracles. And God wants us to end up with two miracles instead of one. He wants us to experience um, not just one, but two in our life. So, what does gratefulness look like? Okay, so, here's a Samaritan man, knew little about God, um, have not much uh, hate knowledge, you know, compared to the Jews. But, uh, again, his, 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 his quality is found in this one word called gratefulness or gratitude. So, what does gratefulness look like? Gratefulness, number one, looks or sounds like, or what you call that, sounds very woke, very loud. In verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice, Glorify God. Okay. So, here is gratitude shown to this man. It's, it's shown through a loud voice. Gratefulness to what God did needs to be loudly proclaimed or declared. Gladly shared. Loudly shared, not shy. This man was not shy. Everyone hears. Even the deaf also now can hear him. So loud that the deaf could also hear someone loudly praising God, loudly giving glory to God. Okay? So it is an expression okay, uh, shown through being woke Everybody hears you praising God. I believe one of the things about the devil is he tries to shut us down. He doesn't want us to uh, sh praise God. Doesn't want, he wants us to just keep all that God has done for us within ourselves. He doesn't want us to talk about it in testimonies, um, to your neighbor, to your family. He just wants to shut you down. But this man, the Bible says, with a loud voice, he glorified God. And Jesus didn't say, hey, hey, don't be so loud. Like, shh, 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 yeah, yeah. Just come to my ears and just tell me, what? Praise the Lord. Jesus, you are so powerful. Praise the Lord. Je Jesus in, you know. Jesus didn't. Don't be so loud, la. You, you, you're waking up everybody, la. You know, everybody will hear you, la. Please be quiet, la. Jesus, no. This man, bro, 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 man. Everybody could hear. You know, our voice is loud in so many areas that Jesus wants us to shh. But yet, the very area that we are supposed to be loud in, we are not loud in. And that is to give glory to God. Amen. We need to be loud. When God has done something powerful for us, amen? Great for us because He's looking for it. The second thing about that described gratitude is this man was prompt. He did not wait until tomorrow. Wow. You know, he got healed, and the Bible says he made a U turn. Maybe at the first step, he saw himself healed. 
No, his stance becomes straight, his nose all become, he totally, every part of him is completely healed. He made a U-turn and he did not put it off until tomorrow, until next week or, you know, next month to show his gratitude. Gratefulness, appreciation, thankfulness should not be delayed. Should not be a delayed thing. Okay. Right on the spot, if you can share it promptly at where you are, praise God. Tell people that's around you, your family, your children, what God has done for you. And the third thing about him was he threw himself at the feet of Jesus. He showed his humility. He could give Jesus a bear hug, you know and just hug Jesus, but he instead fell on the feet of Jesus Christ. And we know Jesus had been traveling from Jerusalem to, to do the, 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 and then he entered the village, you know, and his feet would probably be all full of sand and soil. And it's not very clean, the feet of Jesus Christ. But this man, upon seeing he got healed, he went and fell at the feet of Jesus Christ. And worship Jesus. Another thing about gratitude that when Jesus asked the question, when this man came back and gave glory to Jesus, Jesus began to ask three questions. One of them is, Where are the nine? Now, if you notice, this man did not reply, Jesus. You know, say, well, Jesus, the first one, uh, you know what, he, uh, he went back with his friends already. Uh. The third one, uh, he was afraid to follow you because the cost to follow you is so high. Uh. The seventh one, uh, you know what, his fellow, uh, no good, uh, this fellow, he, you know, the ninth one, uh, even worse, uh, da, 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 da. his people all, uh, I know them all very well, uh, da, 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 da. you can talk about all the nine, da, 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 this fellow, you know, he didn't, and Jesus asked, where are the nine? He like, he got no time to answer Jesus. He was absorbed. He's like a like a sponge, you know, just in love with Jesus. He's he's just looking at Jesus. He don't care about this fella, the fella, the nine, the six, the three. He's just Jesus now. I'm not gonna answer you, Jesus. Where are the nine? I'm I'm just gonna spend time just loving you, just praising you, just giving you all the glory. Just, you know, just absorb in you. It's like Mary, you know, Mary and Martha sitting at the feet of Jesus, Mary. And he just, she just, Jesus, you know. Bing, bang, 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 Mary at the back. Ay, ay, lay, hay, yo, bin, do, ha, lay. Ay, yang, lu, ka, na, mi, chui, fong, gam, do, ye, jo, ha. Ay, yo, ay, chi, choi, la, yo, ay, jam, yo, ay, jay, jay, ka, li, gay, la. And, go, li, ka, li, la, want to cook this, la, wash plates, la, Martha is at the back, la. Say, day, ha, la, mop the floor, la. Ah, Mary, Mary couldn't bother, wash plates another time, la. Jesus is here, la, yeah. So, this man was, just absorbed with Jesus. He just wants to praise Jesus. And, uh, and, uh, and when God has done something for you, just, just spend time just loving the Lord, spend time with Him, absorbing yourself uh, in Jesus. For what? Focus on thanking Him and just focus on praising Him. It's now in the prayer room, I was um, listening to a song. Maybe you should also listen to song. this song. It's about He Is. Okay. It's all about Jesus. The song is about He is the Sharon of Roses. He is the Lily of the Valley. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the firstborn from the dead. He is uh, the bread of life. He is the shepherd of my soul. He is the door. He is the way, the truth of life. He is the uh, bread of life. He is the redeemer of my soul. He is the soon coming king. He is the, the soon coming judge. He is the Alpha Omega. And the song, you, I think we should, because the devil wants us to 
concentrate on him and our problems instead of the problem solver. Is that right? The devil gets us to, ah, this one, ah, the plates here, uh, the broken things here, uh, this problem here, that problem here, instead of focusing on the healer, on the, on the, on, on the one that can fix our problem, on Jesus, on the way, the truth, and the life. You know, this man is so absorbed with Jesus, where are the nine? Uh, you go and, you go and feather out yourself, Jesus, I'm going to worship you. you know? uh, Jesus is only Jesus. Encourage you to do that. Uh, this song he is okay just go to youtube and put he is G who is jesus he is and just play it and now uh, so many things about jesus the maker our creator he is the river of life uh, fountain of waters the bright morning star so many things about jesus the advocate you know the soon coming judge, so many things. So here's this Samaritan. All he knows, he doesn't know about, you know, the law of Moses, Leviticus 14, you know, he probably don't even know about the Ten Commandments, you know, but all he knew to do is to be grateful. Amen? And because he was grateful, Jesus says to him, now I'm going to give you a second miracle. He got his second miracle. So this morning, Sorry, this evening, because of the food, kind of food, <laughs> food affect the thinking a little bit. <laughs> anyway, let's stand to our feet and let's lift up our hands and let's just give thanks to Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give thanks to you, Lord, for being so kind, so compassionate, so full of mercy. So wonderful. Oh, Jesus. Help us, so oh Jesus, to be like this one man who came back to you. Fall on your feet, Lord. Give you all the glory. Lord, if we have somehow not done that, if we have been like the nine who did not return, Lord, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for not being like the one, for being like the nine. Even any, any time we have failed to honor you, we have failed to lift your name up, we have failed to tell others how good you are, how wonderful you are, how compassionate and merciful you are. Forgive us, God. But from this day onwards, Lord, this Wednesday night, 25th of May. Lord, we will always give you all the glory. We will shout your praise. How we will lift up your name. We will not be ashamed to tell what you have done for us, to our neighbors, to our families, to our colleagues, hallelujah, of the wonderful things you have done for us. Lord, again, thank you for tonight, for speaking to us. For helping us in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.